I have all three pairs here with me and I also have my supplies that I'm going to need which is my um, bowl of hot water. I'm again using this little casserole dish. I have um, brought this water to a boil in the electric kettle and then I've let it cool for about five minutes before I poured it into the dish. Um, and then as it sits here, of course, it's cooling off a little bit more. So that makes it the perfect temperature, um, again, to dip my finger into and it's tolerable for a second, but then I have to take it out and I've found that every time this is the perfect temperature to do adjustments with. Um, on acetate, again, this is a disclaimer just for acetate, um, which is perfectly fine because all three of these pairs of Carfia are acetate. So um, then I also have a towel just to wick away any moisture um, that helps me make a better adjustment. So uh, the first one that we're going to work on here is this classic round with a keyhole bridge and its particular issue is that it's a little narrow here in the um, front of the temple. So the very like first inch inch of the temples is quite tight to the point where it's squeezing my head. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to adjust this and the first thing we're going to need to do is fold one temple in and get ready to submerge basically the whole temple in the water. So um, we're going to be bowing it out or putting a curve in where one doesn't quite exist yet. So I'm going to submerge this whole temple in the water here. If I were just observe, adjusting this uh, back piece, then I would just put that in. But for now, we're going to just put this whole thing in because that's the only way that we're going to be able to reach the part that we need. So I'm going to leave this in for about 15 to 30 seconds, just depending on how hot your water is. You can take it out and kind of gauge how hot it's getting. If you feel like it's heated mostly throughout, then you can stop. For me, I'm going to leave this in for a couple more seconds just to make sure I'm really achieving the level of heat that we need for this to be successful. So now I'm going to just dry that off a little bit. So now with my thumb on the inside or both thumbs on the inside and index fingers on the outside I'm going to put my thumbs where I want to put the curve in and then I'm going to use the index fingers to sort of support the outside as I push the inside with the two thumbs. And I'm going to give this you know some gentle but steady pressure and I'm going to be taking note of everything that's happening you know is it bending a little bit uh, without anything else giving? Is it creaking? You know, if you hear the, the metal stem inside creaking, that's usually not an issue, but if it's making a really loud noise, you might want to stop and see what's going on. I'm going to continue to go with that. Likewise, if the hinge is making any noise or you see the hinge start to, to move in a way that it's not supposed to, then definitely discontinue that. But as long as you're using your index finger to kind of hold the place um, on the outside right outside of the hinge this really helps support that part and you're not actually putting too much stress on the hinge this way so I've pushed this out now and as you can see it has quite a bit more curvature than the other side does so we're going to do the same thing with the other side I'm going to fold in the the side I just did and submerge the other side again Okay. so now same thing for the other side I'm going to use the um, index fingers to support everything again and the thumbs open up the other side temple because it just helps. And then sometimes you might want to follow it down the side of the temple as well, further down towards the curve. You might want to keep inching along and helping that to form and make a new shape outwards. Okay, so there we go. Now we have a curvature in both sides and each temple so that when I put these on, it is a comfortable fit. Um, nothing is squeezing my temples anymore. If you find that it has made the temples, how they curve where they meet closer together and tighter, then like I said, just follow that tip where you keep pushing um, and making that bend as you go down all the way down the temple and it will widen it down there for you. So also a quick little thing, um, I want to talk about how I dry these just to make sure there's no um, moisture left in the, in the hinge and that there's no rusting, is first I'll take a towel and just dry it off like that. And uh, then I will take this to the bathroom and use a hair dryer and I'll hold it at every different angle. So I'll hold it like this and shoot it with a hair dryer, hold it out at a 90 degree angle and shoot it with a hair dryer 
And then I'll just do that at various angles with the hair dryer to really dry up any moisture that's lingering. And it'll help any, any moisture fall out um, and then evaporate as I go. And then I don't have to worry about um, tarnish happening to my hinges or other issues like that. So the second pair that we've got here, I think it's kind of smudged up, sorry about that, um, is the Classic Square. And this one's particular issue is that it's really wide. Um, and these are really, really spread out. And we need these to be curved a little more so that they stay behind the ears and they're not gonna slip off when we look downward. So um, the first thing we're gonna do is uh, submerge the temple only where the curvature is happening. Put that in for about 15 to 30 seconds again. Same sort of time frame is fine. And with this adjustment, you have two options. Um, you can follow the metal stem that runs through the inside's natural curvature and pull it sort of downward and inward, or you can curve it just downward like a hook. And I'm going to talk about what I mean. So. With this one, you're going to want to put the index finger underneath and the thumb on top and then support the glasses with the other hand as well. And you're going to want to, just using the thumb and index finger, gradually coax it inward. So as I say, you can either come inward at more of an angle like this or straight downward. Um, and I mean, to just do that, you would just do it pull it down at more of a drastic more of a drastic curvature and you can see where it's curving kind of like a hook now. I see a lot of glasses adjusted like this. Um, a lot of opticals will traditionally do it this way because it does act as kind of like a hook around the ear and that's how to ensure that people get a, like a really secure fit. I personally don't like to do it like that because I find it's not nearly as comfortable and it feels kind of like I'm wearing a headband back in grade school and it's a bit uncomfortable. So um, you can do it that way though. Sometimes that helps a little more than just an inward curvature. So then you would just follow suit with the other temple um, and then you would have a better it's staying on your head a little bit better as you see right now this is actually uh, kicking up a little bit it's not resting flat on an, on an even surface so I'm gonna adjust this side real quick and see if that problem is fixed if it's not we're gonna move on to the third fix on that last classic square pair, the adjustment of the other temple that I did didn't quite fix the lifted temple issue. So we're going to move on to this third pair and I'm going to show you how to account for that and fix that particular one. So the third adjustment needs to take place on this last frame, the um, rounded one with the slight keyhole bridge. On this particular pair, the issue is that one of the temples is kicked up or is raised um, and is a little higher than the other when rested on a flat surface. Now this could be a lot more pronounced than this, but it still needs to be fixed because it causes this particular frame to sit a bit lopsided on my face. So I'm going to just reattach my camera here and then we will get on to the adjustment. Okay, so I've got my hot water again. Again, this came to a boil and it's been resting for about five minutes. Uh, again, I use the electric kettle. Um, so what I'm going to do is, first I'm going to show you how these sit when they're upside down though, when they are flipped the other way lying down. Um, and as you can see, one side is raised up off of the flat surface. And that'll also be the same side though that is flush with the surface when it's right side up. So you do want to turn it upside down to see which side is is raised and is not meeting flat with the surface and that's going to be the side that you pull upwards. So um, we're going to go ahead and take this, I'm going to memorize it by holding on to it, this right uh, temple. Fold the left one in so I know I'm working on the right one. Again, grab my piping, piping water, and I'm going to go ahead and submerge this in the water for about 15 seconds. This isn't going to require as much heat as um, putting a curve in at the temple um, where it's too tight, making it bow out, um, or other such adjustments. This is going to require a little bit less heat than that. So now I'm going to just take this temple and put my index finger underneath and my thumb on the top and we're going to just pull upward.
okay? Now, you can see that the problem has corrected itself a little bit already when I put it on a flat surface. It is, it is touching. Um, if it's more exaggerated than what I showed you in the beginning, you would then just take the other temple as well. So, in this case, fold the right temple in, have the left temple extended, submerge for just a little bit to heat that up, and then instead of pulling upward, you would pull the temple or curve it downward. So I'll just demonstrate this even though I'm not really going to put a lot of force into it because the, um, the first demonstration corrected the issue. So we're going to, again, with the index finger on bottom and thumb on top, just pull downward a little bit. Okay, so then that should, that should do it. And because I demonstrated both sides, it wasn't sitting. There it is. Now it's sitting flush on the surface both ways. Um, you can adjust it at the hinge as well. Um, this is something that I have done in the past in optical. That's what we were encouraged to do. But um, I guess there's a reason it's for optical systems only because, you know, you do put stress on the hinge that way. You can break it that way. So if you're not being really, really careful, um, breakage can happen. And also it's just not great to stretch the hinge like that. So this is a slightly different method. Um, sometimes it will leave, you know, a dip in the frame where in the temple where you'll see it go kind of downward and then you'll see it kind of curve up um, semi noticeably where you where you did that to adjust it. But as long as it fixes the lopsidedness issue on the face, it's, it's not really going to matter what the temple looks like. Now I applied the same principle that I used on the rounded pair. I applied it to the classic square and now it's sitting flush with a flat surface as well. Hopefully that takes care of all three of those there. And that is the three pairs of Carthea sunglasses. Again, the round with the, the over, more oversized round with a slight keyhole bridge, the classic round with a keyhole bridge, and then the classic square. So guys, thanks so much for watching. I really hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you next time.